Hey SolidWorks users, welcome back to our three-part series where we are designing and 3D printing a custom-designed juice dispenser. In part one of the series, we laid out the basic shape of the dispenser shell. In part two, we'll model a removable lid and the internal details of the dispenser using some more essential modeling techniques. I'm going to run through some of the simpler functions quicker than I normally would since we already covered them in part one of the series, but I'll make sure to slow down to point out some of the new modeling features during this part of the series. Sketching on the top plane, I'll quickly convert the outer shape of the design and extrude it 3 inches to start creating the lid. When extruding, just make sure to uncheck the Merge Results option. Now sketching on the right plane, I'll create an enclosed arc sketch and use the Extruded Cut tool on the mid plane to shape the lid. Before shelling the lid, I'll add fillets to a few of the outer edges. Now right click and hide the main body and the small lock body. Navigate to the shell tool found in the features tab of the command manager. First type in the wall thickness you'd like to maintain, in this case 0.15 inches, and then select the face you'd like to remove in the shelling operation. And click the green check mark to create the shell. And I'll just add one more fillet to the internal edge of the lid. The front face of the lid will house the buttons for our dispenser. So I'm going to split the front portion away and combine it to the main body instead. A simple way to split this is to simply sketch a line on the right plane that protrudes all the way through the part. Exit the sketch and navigate to Insert, Features, Split. Ensure your line sketch is selected under Trim Tools. Click the Cut Bodies button and select the bodies you'd like to split. If you'd like to keep the bodies in the model, make sure the Consume Cut Bodies option is not selected. Now let's run through adding some of the necessary internal details. Again, I'm running through these rather quickly since I'm just using the same essential bosses and cuts we've already run through in the past part of the series. I'll first create a 0.25 inch lip on the top face and behind the front portion of the main body to keep the lid aligned. With these lips, I'm designing just about 0.01 inches of clearance all the way around to make sure the lid slides on easily. and I'll cut a corresponding groove into the front of the lid, again making sure about 0.01 inches of clearance is designed in. Now I need to extend the cut that created this little ledge on the bottom of the part. I'll do this by simply converting the ledge faces over to a new sketch and using the extruded cut tool up to the first reference plane we created in part one of the series. Now with this cut added, I can create a copy of this little lock to line up with the ridges inside of my refrigerator door. In the Features tab, navigate to Move slash Copy Bodies. I'm moving this body up in the Y direction, 5.9 inches, and I'll ensure the Copy option is selected, and click the green check mark to create the copy. Now with the right plane selected, we can mirror these two lock bodies to the other side of the dispenser. To merge these four lock bodies to the main body, navigate to the Combine tool in the Command Manager. Ensure the Add Operation type is selected, and select the four locks as well as the main body. After combining, I'll add a small fillet to blend these locks into the main body a bit. I'm designing this lid to be held in place with rare earth magnets, so I'll just create some extruded bosses in the main body as well as the lid and add a few fillets to blend the extrusions into the parts.
Then I'll cut some small wells into the bosses to accept the magnets. Now I'll use the extruded cut tool to add the holes in this overhanging face for the dispensing tubes, and I'll also cut the holes for the buttons in the front face. To wrap up the design, I'm going to create some extruded clips to hold the small pumps and the 9 volt battery in the inside of the dispenser. Sketching on this internal top face, I'm simply going to sketch a point 0.25 inches away from the front edge of the dispenser's weld. I'll be using this point to create a new reference plane. Exit the sketch, select the front plane, and navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane. This will begin creating an offset reference plane. Then select the newly sketched point to control how much this new plane is offset from the front plane. Now sketching on this new plane, I'm creating a circular clip to accept one of the small air pumps I'll be using to dispense the juice. Here I'm just making sure the bottom portion of the clip overlaps the top of the main component a bit. I'll come back later and cut a little well to glue these clips into. Now with one of the clip profiles sketched and fully constrained, I'm going to create a linear pattern of this sketch since we need three air pumps. Navigate to the Linear Pattern Sketch tool in the Command Manager. I'll first set my spacing dimension for the pattern, in this case 1.375 inches. Then I'll select the sketch I'd like to pattern. To pattern a fully enclosed sketch, rather than having to select all of the individual lines of the sketch, simply click the purple highlighted area which designates this as an enclosed sketch. So here, to get the spacing right, I'm going to create a pattern of four clips. Then in the Instances to Skip box, I'll select this instance that interferes with one of the buttonholes. There we have our clip sketches which I'll extrude one inch, making sure not to merge these clips as I'll 3D print them separately. And I'll create one final clip for the 9 volt battery, again extruding it one inch. Then, sketching on the same plane, I'm sketching around these newly created clips to cut some corresponding wells into the main body of the dispenser. Here, I'm maintaining 0.01 inches of clearance around the clips. Exit the sketch, and this time, in the extruded cut tool, I'm going to cut the wells in two directions. We'll go 1.01 .01 inches in direction 1, then under direction 2 I'll cut 0.01 .01 inches. This maintains our 0.01 .01 inches of clearance around the clips. Lastly, under feature scope, I want to make sure only the main dispenser body is selected so we don't cut into the clips as well. And there we have the wells that these clips can be glued into during assembly. That wraps up the design of my custom fit refrigerator juice dispenser. This is a pretty large dispenser at about 13 inches across by 15 inches tall, so stay tuned for the final part of our series where I'll split this part up into smaller segments for printing on desktop 3D printers, and we'll run through 3D printing, assembling, and finishing the dispenser in our workshop.